Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be having been bound in the heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth shall be having been loosened on, he- uh, excuse me, in the heaven. And again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning any matter that they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in the heavens. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Now let's, let's really understand this section, because man, if there's a section that's misused and misquoted and abused, it's this thing. So now let's ask the logical, rational question. Can, can two or three people get together, and that means the Father has to do whatever they say because they agree about it? Is that really what it's saying? Because that would be scary. Okay, that would be a scary power. But that would be like magic. All we need to do is get a magic circle of two or three, and then we can just, the Father has to do whatever we say. No, look what it says. Let's get the context. First of all, the context goes back to the beginning of the chapter. We're talking about being humble and being in His authority. And now it says here, look, you, the you He's talking about who are doing the binding and loosing, are the ones that are at the end of this where he says, those who are gathered in my authority are the ones who are doing the binding and loosing. If you're not gathered in his authority, in other words, if you don't have his authority to do it, you're just a couple of guys getting together agreeing with each other. Heaven isn't binding anything or loosening anything. So this was out, it's not that it was out of order, but sometimes in the order he'll say something first, like saying, hey, if you're in my authority, then whatever you bind and loose will be okay. Here he said it at the end. He said, whatever you bind and loose, whatever you go ahead and do and agree, when two or three are coming together on any matter, he says, my Father in the heavens is going to do it. He says, only though, if you are to gather together in my authority. If I have not given you the authority, you have no authority to bind or loose anything. So let's be careful with that whole thing about being gathered together in his name, in his identity, in who he is, in his fullness. There I am in your midst. And that's why, by the way, that's why the Father does it, because Yeshua is in the middle of it, not because you did it. He says, there I am in your midst. By the way, this brings us back to two cannot walk together unless they have an agreement or agreed. And the agreement that's being talked about is Exodus 19, where the agreement is, you obey and I take you as my people. And so you can't just have two or three get together and, oh, Father has to do what I said. We, we agreed. And we used the magic name, so, you know, we came together and we said, we're doing this in His name. That's not how it works. Let's be careful with that. And hopefully we can see that it's talking about authority here. So all of this stuff that's previous has to do with going back to the authority. Now let's just go back to verse 15 to see the context even more. If your brother sins against you, go and reprove him between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not hear you, take one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word might be established. And if he refuses to hear them, them who the witnesses, say it to the assembly. And if he refuses even to hear the assembly, let him be to you like a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on... So the binding and loosing in verse 18 has to do with the authority of the leadership of the assembly to impose on a member of the assembly a problem that's happening to get them to stop sinning against their brother. You see the context? Do we follow the context? Do we agree that Matthew 18, verse 18, 19 and 20, follows after verse 15, 16 and 17? Does it follow that way in your Bible? So verse 18 does come after verse 17 and 16 and 15? Okay, so... And can we agree that there was no time lapse between what he said in verse 15, 16, and 17 and verse 18? In other words, sometimes in a chapter, it'll say, the end of something, and it'll say, and then he arrived in Copernicum, or whatever he, you know, wherever he ended up, and so we know something new is happening. No. Here, it's, he's in the same conversation, this is the same sermon he's given, the same message he's giving. And he's talking about, look, if, if your brother sins against you, Here's how you handle it. And then he says, look, and if it has to go as far as the assembly, realize that you guys, if you have authority, that when two or three come together in authority, you can throw him out. You have the authority to cast them out like a tax collector or like a Gentile. That's all he's saying here. 
oh no, people want to pull this little soundbite out and say, oh well look, it's wherever two or three are gathered together, there is his name. And that's what they'll use as an excuse for where they go together to keep the feasts and stuff. Hey, I don't need to go any place where there's an assembly. As long as there's two or three to gather together, there he is. That's not what it says. If two, and three, if, if two or three of us get together and we're hanging out just on an afternoon, you know, uh, you know drinking tea and, and, and just talking, he's not necessarily just there in our midst approving of everything we're doing. Now, yes, Big Brother is watching us. And he is watching all the time. And Yahweh is everywhere and all the times and, you know, seeing and doing But that doesn't mean he's there endorsing every little thing we talk about and everything that we're doing. We are just gathered together because we're just gathered together. He's talking about in the context of authority here. We have a man who's sinning against his brother. He won't hear his brother. He won't hear the witnesses. And then he comes to the assembly. What is the problem here? Submission to authority. And so Yeshua is now talking about it from the position of authority. When two or three in authority are gathered together in my authority, what they bind or loose. By the way, doesn't this kind of sound like Deuteronomy? When it talks about when you go before the judges and the priests, and you better listen to what they have to say, because they have authority to bind and loose, so to speak. Okay, in Deuteronomy 17, and let's say a verse 11. Okay? Okay. Let's see if I want to go a little further. Let's go to verse 8. So in Deuteronomy 17, 8, it says, When any matter arises which is too hard for you to judge, between blood and blood, between plea and plea, or between stroke and stroke, matters of strife within your gates, that you shall rise up and go to the place where Yahweh your Elohim chooses, and shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judge who is in those days, and shall inquire. Is that not a lot like Matthew 18? He says, And they shall declare to you the word of right ruling. So who's declaring the word of right ruling? Your best friend who you got on the phone with and and, and started talking to about the situation? Another member of the congregation who you wanted to talk to? All the gossiping that's going back and forth? No. You go to the authority, to the judges, to the priests, to the Kohanim. Who would that be today? The congregational leadership? And you inquire... And they will declare to you the word of right ruling. And you shall, listen verse 10, you shall do according to the word which they declare to you from that place which Yahweh chooses. And you shall guard. Now bear in mind, this is all based on this being a place Yahweh chose and anointed, appointed leadership. If you don't believe that leadership is actually there, why are you here anyway? I'm just being blunt. If it's not, if you go someplace and the pillar of the fire, the pillar of the cloud, whatever is not there, the anointing is not there, why do you go? Go find the anointing. And if, you know what? That's why some of you drive two or three hours. It's worth driving a few hours to be where there's an anointing. So why wouldn't you do that? I know people are going to be listening and saying, oh, Rabbi's out of control now with his ego, thinking he's so special. No, I'm saying if I was you, I'd do the same thing. I'd go find where the anointing is, and I would drive as far as I had to drive to go be where it is. So this isn't about me. I'm just, this is a point about what this is talking about. So look what he says here. He says, do according to the Torah... Okay, wait, well, oh, excuse me. And you shall do according to the word which they declare you to do from the place which Yahweh chooses, and you shall guard to do according to all that they instruct you to do. You can't do any of this unless you're willing to submit to them authoritatively, in terms of authority. If you're not submitting to their authority, you're not going to do everything they do. By the way, there are people in this congregation who can give you testimony that they've come to me over the last year or two and said, I am going to submit myself, and they have testimonies that you would not believe. Because they chose to come and submit to an authority. And that's not because I'm so brilliant, but because what they did, Yahweh honored it and, and gave them the, the healings, the blessings, the restorations, the interventions, the redemptions that they were needing. And hopefully he inspired some of the things for me to say as well in terms of those mixes. But it was more than just what I said. They got more anointing, more redemptions, more interventions because they came and they submitted to an authority. And I can promise you that everybody generally almost without exception that I can think of, that is left here, has never done that. And so they never experienced that because they were never willing to come and submit to the authority. And that's not about bowing down and kissing my feet. It's showing the Father you're willing to respect authority and then He will give you, not me, I'm not the one that gives you anything. I may, I may give you some counsel that I believe he opens my mouth and he puts the words in for counsel and gives you wisdom and gives you discernment, but he gives you above and beyond, way beyond anything that I'm involved in because you submitted. 
because you submitted. Look what it says here. He says, look, do according to the Torah in which they teach you. So that person ought to be teaching you Torah application to your issues. According to the right ruling which they say to you, you do not turn to the right or to the left the word which they declare to you. And the man who acts arrogantly and has not to listen to the priest who stands to serve there before Yahweh your Elohim, or to the judge, that man shall die, so you shall purge the evil from Israel. Look, I'm sorry, but there are people that are out there right now in every assembly, so it's not just here, that have left that assembly because they didn't agree with that leadership and didn't want and have an issue with that leadership, didn't want to submit to that leadership, and then gets all mad about the fact that they're then cut off in some way from the assembly. Yahweh calls not listening to the priest who's in authority evil. Arrogance. Of course, the people that are doing this are claiming the priest is the one who's evil and arrogant. Yahweh says the other way around. If you don't want to listen to the anointed appointed, you're being arrogant, and it's evil. He says, thus you shall purge evil from your midst. Wow. Now, now by the way, did it say that the priests were perfect? Did it say they would never make a mistake? But who's really in charge? Yahweh. Do you not trust that? And again, if you don't believe that I'm an anointed appointed, well, just use me as an example because obviously I'm the one speaking. If you don't believe I'm an anointed appointed, well, then you shouldn't be here. But then don't complain about not being here and there. In a way. I mean, look, either you're a part of this or you're not. Either you're submitted to this or you're not. Is that fair? Yes. And, I, and I think that's where, you know, people want to have their cake and eat it too. Well, I want to do whatever I want, but I, and I don't want to submit to your authority, but I want to be welcomed and in as if I'm just wonderfully loved and family at the same time. And this is not the way it says. It says that that behavior is evil, and it needs to be purged. I'm sorry, but Yahweh's that blunt, not me. And everybody gets mad at me, like I'm so harsh and cold, and, and uh, where's the, we just don't feel the love, Rabbi, from you. Do you read this? Anybody want Rabbi Moses? Anybody want, do you, can you imagine, you think I'm tough? Imagine Moshe was your rabbi. Do you think he's going to be having lunch with all of you and just being the, the socialite of all, of, the, of all time, just hanging out and being just... I don't think so. You know why? Because he knew that this was life and death. And you know what? I Hopefully you understand that I know it's life and death. That I speak what I speak because I'm crying aloud and sparing not because I don't want you to die. Do you understand that that's my cry? That it breaks my heart that you guys, there's too many people just wanting to be coddled. Grow up. I mean, I hate to be so blunt. Because some of you that need to be coddled, who are acting like you need to be coddled, are in your 60s, in your 50s, in your 70s, and and you know what? Enough is enough. This isn't a game. Okay, this is no game. This is life and death. Yeshua came to bring a sword. If you're not paying attention, you're going to get sliced up. He didn't just bring a sword to say, hey, what do you think of my sword? He's wielding the sword. And if you come too close and you're not really doing what you're supposed to be doing, which means paying attention, you're going to get whacked by the sword. You'll get sliced up because you took it too casually. Casually. 